guitar practice session 10 to 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, hoping the practice sessions help me to generate a routine, verbalize the things that I am learning to better get it in my mind, possibly provide information to others working on similar items, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody has any suggestions on how to do things better than the way I'm currently doing them in order to understand them. The practice session might look a little bit different than other practice sessions you have looked at. My objective is to make everything basically going the same way so it's as easy to visualize the fretboard as possible. Therefore, I'm visualizing it as our perspective from behind the guitar where we have the low string on top and then we have top to bottom, left to right. That's how the worksheet is set up as though we imprinted the guitar we're holding onto the screen. Low string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, top to bottom, left to right, the same as we see it from behind our guitar. I'm even flipping my guitar around on the screen so it looks like I'm left-handed so that you can once again see it top to bottom left to right in the same orientation and I'll try to line it up so that the 12th fret the one we are working on will line up to some degree with where my fingering is uh, on the guitar so you can kind of visualize it that way as well so we're going to be working on the mixolydian in this one so i take a look at the mixolydian which i'm calling absolute mode number five we'll talk about what do i mean by calling it absolute mode uh, number five we'll talk about the intervals comparing the intervals as they are related to the uh, relative major scale, the, the seventh being the different interval. And then we're gonna try to break up the practice session. I'm trying to break it up into smaller chunks so that I can look at the intervals, but not spend a whole like hour on that. Uh, I, I think basically 10 to 20 minute chunks are supposed to be optimized, you know, time breakouts for uh, optimizing learning when you're doing stuff that's kind of complex such as trying to get these modes down. So I'm going to be moving back and forth between this layout and then also thinking about the three notes per string layout. And then also we'll jump over here to the modes in one position. So what I start off doing is we look at this position, discuss what this position is, breaking out the fretboard into five chunks and then looking at the shapes within this position, which I use two different ways to do, which I think I'm trying to get better at verbalizing and comprehending. That being within this shape, we have the house analogy, which seven notes house analogy, which has three shapes in it, three sub shapes. And then we have the pentatonic analogy, which I call the hamburger barbell analogy that we can then extend from a five note pentatonic to a seven note. I'm trying to visualize that both ways so that I can switch my mind back and forth between them and then take that seven note analogy in particular that has this little box house analogy. We then go over to the three note per string shape and try to say, how can I tie this shape into what I already know with the seven note per string house analogy? Meaning I can tell where to start the shape, for example, and then I can see what the differences are trying to reconciling the difference between using this format to play our scales versus the five note per string format, attempting to be able to visualize it so that I can switch my mind back and forth between the two formats able to use each of them in their optimized characteristics or zones. And as we do this, hopefully finding out which way to like think about these scales are optimal for which situation. So I kind of look at that in more detail. And then I also go into this one mode where I'm trying to think of ourselves in, after I do the intervals, then I go into this bit where I'm trying to think of one position and pivot around the same position focusing in on the key of A and then adjust the intervals from that position so that I'm playing the A major versus A Dorian versus A Phrygian and so on. A technique that helps us to better understand the difference between the intervals but also practical because if you're trying to play a song and you wanted to have different modes in it, the two ways you would do that is to use the related modes like we've been looking at like C, C major compared to A minor, or the complementary modes, which I think is this, what this is called, meaning we stay on the same 
take uh, a central point root, but then we change the modes right within within the song. So we'll play with that, and then at the end, I try to mess with our our. This is my worksheet that breaks out all of the different combinations of three note or three chords. Uh, so all combinations of three chords using the one of whatever scale we're in, in this case, mixolydian as the starting point. And then I'll also end it off with that as well so that I have a more formal process to kind of pick just three chords that I have to then transpose into the current uh, mode that we're in. In this case, mixolydian. So what does it mean to be like a one, three, two? What chords am I going to play? Are they major or minor? What about adding sevens, ninths, elevens, and so on to them? Try to think about that and then just kind of messing around to play in open position versus up the fretboard. And the idea being that if we can narrow down just kind of noodling around with three chords, then then that's going to help to free up our mind to do other things with it rather than trying to noodle around and not not kind of define exactly three chords because then we're just there's too many options and so i think i really think that that limits people a lot because we just the fretboard doesn't look that large you know so we kind of think like there's not that many options there can't be but it's infinite the op the options are infinite right so we have to really kind of narrow down on what we're working on in order to kind of not get uh overwhelmed i think which isn't as obvious when you just look at the size of the fretboard possibly but in any case so then i mess with that at the end continuing on with what i would call shape number four looking at what i would call mode number five that being the mixolydian mode remembering that i'm using absolute mode numbers based on the major scale in other words if we call the major scale or ionian mode mode number one the fifth of that scale would be the mixolydian because the one four five of the major key are the major chords they are also the major modes therefore Mode five mixolydian is a major mode, meaning it has a major third as opposed to a minor third. It's indicated as a major mode by the uppercase Roman numeral. So we're gonna be in the mixolydian. Here's the relative positions one through seven. Here's the uh, notes uh, one through seven. And then we're gonna keep the modes in terms of the numbering system related to the absolute numbering system based on the Ionian or major scale being mode number one. We're gonna be looking at the mixolydian, which has a distinctive minor seventh. So the mixolydian is a major mode, and then it has that minor seventh, so we can compare all other intervals to the related major uh, scale. And of course, we have a perfect first, which would be the same, a major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, and then it has that minor uh, seven in it, which kind of gives it like a bluesy uh, type of feel for it. All right, let's look at the shape over here. Uh, in our shapes, we have what I would call shape number four. That's because if I named this shape, na shape number one that starts here, this would be shape number two that starts here, shape number three and shape number four. In this case, shape number four is also the open shape that we would have. We can call it a G shape if you're looking at it from the major scale because the the major or Ionian would be the fourth of the mixolydian it's a C and you can see that if I was to build a, a chord off of the C it would be a, a, a major chord so I can use that scaffolding to say here's gonna be my C shape which I can't really finger too well up top I should go to the electric but I'm not gonna do it I'm just gonna keep going here so I could finger that as a three notes and then add on top of it the five note pentatonic the three notes fitting uniquely into that five note shape and then I can add the two notes on top of that. So I can also call this shape, uh, notice I, I could call it right now, I'm, I'm in, I could call it the Phrygian shape. That's because if I start on the first note in the shape, then I would be naturally playing a Phrygian mode because it's got that distinctive uh, second in it, which would be a minor second. Uh, but I also could call it a Lydian shape uh, because, because this is the normal shape that I would go to play Lydian. This is one of the problems with breaking the, f the fretboard into five shapes. 
makes sense because that's perfect for our fingering. We have four to five fingers, four to five fingered shapes, but there's seven modes. So that means that I can't name each shape based on the starting mode point. We're not just starting each shape on the first note of that mode. So over here, that's why I would call it the second note Phrygian, meaning it's the, it's the shape that has the second note in it is the Phrygian. And most of the major shapes, that is the case. Because if you take a look at the major shape, which would be here, which would be an, a, a, a bar chord for an E major bar chord, it actually has the second note in the shape. Now you could think of it as, a, again, a pentatonic shape, where it might be the first note in the shape. But if you think of the full seven notes, I would call it a note two uh, major shape, right? Or you can call it the E shape, E major shape. Uh, but if you played from the A, it would actually be a Locrian shape, which you don't really know probably because no one calls it a Locrian shape because no one plays in Locrian typically, right? So, but you still have that kind of issue here. All right, and so then, so then where are we gonna be? We're gonna be looking at the G. So where's uh, the G going? Now, the next thing I wanna get down is within these shapes, now I've got these nice vertical shapes where everything is in is in packed in up and down nicely. That's really useful the more I think about it because it's it's gonna be easier, like let's do it in open position here. It's easier for me to reach different things and play multiple string chords. Uh, so that's perfect for that because I can use the different strings to play uh, different chords. However, there's gonna be other advantages for thinking about other forms of shapes, which I'm gonna to go to shortly, which is the three note per string. So let's go into the shape and see if I can compare and contrast some of the, the shapes inside of it and then go to that three note per string and then I'll come back here and we'll do the intervals. So within this shape, most people break out within this shape now uh, into two main types. Now remember, I can think of the guitar as a six note instrument, but it has five five actual strings and then one string is repeated. So one way I can try to think of the shapes then is to start try to break out the five strings that are unique strings into what I would call a seven note shape, which would be a two, two, uh, uh, one string. And that would look like this. And that's what I call my house analogy because this box, I'm gonna call it a house where we have the double stop house shape. We've got the two note per string shape, what I'm calling the flat shape. And then I'm, cause it's a, like a house, the flat, and then I'm calling the house double stop. And so those are the three shapes that we would see. And then of course, there's a repeat up here. This is the bottom of the house double stop. Now, if I look at it that way, then I'm naturally looking at a seven note shape. If I wanted to reduce it down to the typical five note pentatonic, I would look at the box, the house note shape, and remove these corners, the top left corner and the bottom right corner of the box. And that's how I can go from a seven note down to a five note using that shape construction. The other way people break down this shape is what I would call the hamburger and barbell analogy. So if I copy this, I'm gonna put this over here and paste it. And just so I can see it a little bit more clearly without the kink in the tuning, here's where the hamburger would be. The hamburger has been shifted up because of the fault line right there because of the kink in the tuning. But if I saw it, uh, if I saw it this way, then uh, what I would have is the five note shape, which is gonna be in, in what I would call the barbell. We would play the outsides of the barbell, and then we go into the three string uh, hamburger shape, and then back into the barbell. So that means that we're playing a three string, two string kind of breakout of the five strings. And then if I wanted to go from there, from a five note to the seven note, I would have to add the two notes. The two notes would be on the inside of this shape. It'd always be the same if you see the shapes this way. You'd have to add the, the handle of the barbell inside. And then when I look at the hamburger, which might be easier to see over here, there's gonna be a little bit on the end of the hamburger, which I imagine putting a, a, a hat, a ball cap, baseball cap on the hamburger. So you have a visor sticking out this way. And then you have to, and compensate for that added weight so the hamburger doesn't tip over with another note on the bottom of the hamburger bun. 
So you add a visor to the top of the hamburger bun and add a little foot to the back of the hamburger bun, making your hamburger look more kind of like a Z type of shape. So those are, those are the two analogies I'm gonna kind of run through as we go through all the modes. And then I wanna see where all the different modes kind of live within this shape. And so, and that's gonna help us to kind of navigate around hopefully. <laughs> but before I do that, let's go back to the three note modes just so we get a different perspective and say, can I look at this a different way as we go through this? So the three note per string shape looks very similar to, to our shapes because when we look at our house analogy, we're still gonna have the box, double stop and double stop box, uh, but we're gonna have one different shape, which I'm gonna call the, the three pillars shape. Now notice that this shape is gonna be in the red and I'm looking at it in the key of C now, uh, just to, to look at it in the key of C and notice it's shifting up. So this is the thing that's gonna be different. Now the, the benefit here, especially when you're in the major key, is you can reach up to that third up here instead of having to go back here to the third. And so it's that is very useful to kind of see that way, even if you're still gonna go back to your normal box, just to realize you can reach up to the third this way uh, because that's going to be, you know, quite useful. So even even if you're thinking of it, just you're thinking of your same, this would be shape number two, by the way. This is going to be this box, this orange box is showing shape number two. Notice that this E is reaching out beyond that. But so I can still think of myself as in shape number two, but I'm just going to say I can still reach that E, which is the same as this E, or that third, which is the same as this third. And that's going to be a, a little bit useful to do so just so just this top three note per string shape is useful to kind of see and then this purple box represents the what i would call shape number three and obviously this three note per string shape is moving up through those two shapes so the three note per string shape is not as good at like playing chords on multiple strings because like if I reached all the way up here to the A, for example, uh, then that's all I'm gonna be able to reach, right? So I might go through and try to get to the different intervals over here so we can see the intervals looking at from this C all the way from the, this C to here to count the intervals out this way, but it's, gonna, but it's gonna be more of a stretchy type of thing. So that means that this kind of shape is probably best used for like people that are doing like soloing or something like that because you can reach further up as you're playing like one note at a time or like power chords or something uh, like that. So, so, that, so that's what I'm tending to think on that. Now, in terms of the shapes, it's kind of interesting because this, the, the shapes that this breaks out into, and I'm still kind of thinking this over, so you know, this is my thought process we actually have <clears throat> what I'm calling the three pillars shape. So we have the three pillars shape here. I'm showing it here because we start off in the key of C with only the second out of the three pillars, right? The three pillars would start here, in this case with the G. And right now we're starting with the, with the middle bit with the C. So we have the three pillars shape. And then we've got this shape, which is what we've seen before which is the house double stop. And then we've got the double stop house shape. So that's kind of funny because there's only six strings on the guitar, five unique strings, and then a repetitive string. And this, this pattern actually has a shape that consumes three strings and then another that consumes two strings and another that consumes two strings. So we got a pattern that has two, four, five, six, seven strings in it that we're laying on top of the instrument that only has five, six strings, five unique strings. Six. So that means that the pattern, the whole pattern can't actually be seen in one run through the guitar because there's only six strings and the pattern is running through a seven string pattern, right? So that's a little wonky to kind of see just to just to point that out so then then of course the pattern's going to repeat down here so we have like when we end off the pattern down here it repeats basically up top so it still works uniformly everything it's it's just pure logic everything is makes sense but 
it's kind of interesting to to see how that's laying out how that's kind of laying out you have a, a pattern that's running through a seven one way to think of it is it's like a seven string pattern that you can't really see on one run through the guitar which only has the five strings and then the pattern's going to repeat the other thing that's kind of interesting is that when we see this shape over here we, when we see when we see like the box it's always going to be the box and then there's a double stop on the right and then the box and there's a double stop on the left that's why you always end up with a box double stop or a double stop box and then the only other pattern that we have to deal with is the two note per string uh, a hamburger or you know just one string shape whereas over here the pattern is that we're actually starting in the middle of the box so we're 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 not always going to land on the same part of the box right so that's just something i think that could help to unlock kind of this pattern which would be it's going to be the same intervals like i can look at this box and say, well, the, the top right of the box is always gonna be the major, and the, the, then, then you've got the Lydian, like we've been looking before, we've got the, uh, the Locrian is in the attic of the box, and the Phrygian's over here, that's all the same. However, depending on where I'm playing through the pattern, I might not be playing the entire box, right? Because I'm gonna be starting here, I'm starting the pattern in the middle of the box. And then if we run through the pattern, we say, what, what happens then? Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go boom, I'm gonna go boom, boom. And then instead of going back here, which would play the rest of the box, which would lead me back to repeating the box over here, instead of doing that, uh, we're gonna just, we're just gonna abandon the back of the house over here and instead reach up top. So now we've already got the E out here. So, so when I first start through this position, I'm not gonna go, you know, I'm never basically going backwards. Whereas in, whereas when I do this position over here, five note per string, sometimes I end up going backwards, right? To stay within the same number of frets. Here, I'm always gonna be tending to lean forward. So my choice here is to lean forward, go into this E, stretching out further, or to lean backwards, go into this E. I'm always gonna end up leaning forward because of just the way that the numbers work out on, on the guitar which is why this tend this shape tends to lean us forward, right? So now so now that means that when I go back here, I'm not going to go to the back of the box. I'm at the top of the box, boom boom boom. By the way, this shape is very useful because it's very symmetrical. So when you're kind of noodling around, it's a little bit of a reach to go up to that third up there, but once you do that, so you can easily start to play stuff. So if you if you're someone that really likes these bar shapes, obviously, then you can always noodle around within that bar shape now instead of having to go back to this third, right? We can always go to this third. Just to give it, just to, you know, do something, just do something in between, you know, the chord. Or something, right? So then, so then when I get to, when I get to this A, so now we've we've gotten to the bottom of the three pillars and the next shape always is we've already abandoned like this side over here so we're not going to go backwards i can't go backwards uh to this a we've reached up uh to this a and so now we're going to go up to the next shape which is a b so it's going to naturally move up right so we're naturally going to be moving up and so that's not because of the kink in the tuning or a fault line that's going to be a natural move up and now we're back to our normal shape. So notice here we have the same shape. It was a it was a a a box uh, double stop, but instead of starting in the middle of the box, now I'm starting on I'm I'm ending up on the left of the box to end off my pattern because I need that leading tone to go back. So it's interesting when I get to this box, this box again, if I wanted to start the shape from this box I would start it from this C right here and I can do the same pattern and boom and then I'd be reaching out here and then boom 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 right same the same three patterns but when I'm ending off the pattern it's kind of rotating through the shape right so I rotated for the, the left side of the shape and then I rotated now through so now I'm playing the entire shape 
And if I continue on still thinking of, of myself playing as in like this shape as though this is the C major, now, now, now it's actually the second note of the same shape, right? So it would be like, it would be like, like I'm at, like now I, like you can actually think of this as though like this shape right here, if I played from that B and I played three notes per string, it would be boom, 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 boom. And then we'd have uh, uh, the G and then, it, and then it goes to the double stop box, right? I can, and then it starts to, and see right here, if I started here, it looks that it looks normal, right? Because because I haven't gotten to that point where I'd reach out, so I get to here. But then here, now I have to reach out. That's where that that longer reaches that throws the two shapes off, right? But if I start if I thought of myself as in the Locrian mode, starting on the B, then I could say, well, I'm still going to play the C major scale in this Locrian shape. Right? How can I do that? I could just start on the second note. It wouldn't be a three note per string shape. Now I would just start here and go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and so on, which basically mirrors pattern number two, uh, at least the top part of the pattern number two, because we haven't hit that three note per string shape in that particular shape. So in other words, if I start, if I play this shape through down to here, Notice this is the same as though I'm playing the C pattern through, but using what you might call pattern number two or using the Locrian three note per string pattern, but starting on the second note. Okay, I know I'm just kind of, I, I know that's a weird, I'm just trying to see it different, basically the pattern uh, different ways. So, so that's, I'm just trying to mull that over from time to time. So I might come back later and get back into that, but just just something to think about uh, as we do that, as we as we go through our, our normal routine over here. All right, let's go back to the normal routine over here. So now we're gonna say that we're gonna say, where's my roots? Well, I'm on mixolydian. If I know this shape up here is a is a uh, Phrygian shape, then how can I get to the mixolydian? Well, the Phrygian shape. I know is the second of the major scale and I want to get to the fifth of the major scale. So if I know that E is the second, I can say that's going to be two, uh, three, wait, the, the Phrygian is the third. The Phrygian is the third of the major scale. So if I know that's the third, it's going to be three, four, five, and that's going to get me to the fifth. So that's one way I can do it. If I see this, this shape as like, uh, the Lydian shape, I know that's the fourth of the major scale and I want to get to the fifth of the major scale so I could say there's the four and then so there's the five is another way I might uh, look at it okay and so now what do I want to do I'm going to say uh, where's the root located well I could see it down here it's on the bottom of what I would call from the house analogy the uh, house double stop so it's on the bottom of that and then uh, the octave is going to be up here in what I would call the the flat uh, analogy. Now, if I saw it in terms of the barbell, so here's the barbell. It's on the right side of the barbell uh, if you're doing a five-note pentatonic barbell. And I can imagine that because on the left side, we have the weights, the heavy weights of the main uh, minor modes. Phrygian and the main minor and then on the right you got the most popular uh, the most popular majors which is of course the major scale and then the mixolydian on top and then the and then the other side of it <clears throat> is on the two note per string hamburger the meat of the hamburger <clears throat> so you'll note that the that the uh, mixolydian is not in the house it's not in C's house even though it's a major mode it's it's outside it hangs out with the minors because the minor modes because it has that uh seventh minor seven in common with them or at least that's the story i come up with right to, in order to in order to try to memorize this stuff <clears throat> all right so if i if i looked at the shape then uh we can say we're going to say if i started here and i said okay let's look at the whole steps and half steps so if i started here it's going to be 
from the first to the second. That's pinky to point. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I want the yellow one. There's too many things here. Pinky to pointer is a whole step. So from the first to the second of the mixolydian is a whole step. From the second to the third, that's just like the minor scale. From the second to the third is going to be a whole step. From the third of the mixolydian to the fourth of the mixolydian is going to be a half step. And then from the fourth of the mixolydian to the fifth of the mixolydian, that's pinky to pointer. So that's a whole step from the fifth of the mixolydian to the sixth of the mixolydian. That's a whole step. So uh, that's a whole step. And then here's the funny one from sixth of the mixolydian to the seventh of the mixolydian, you've got a funny half step. It's funny because it's different from the major getting us here, which results in that, that funny 10 note away different interval from the major scale, which is a minor seven. And then when I go from the seven to the eight, we get a whole step, which is also out of sync to the, to the major to get us back to the normal spot. So where are my half steps here? Well, remember the half steps on, are always in the box. So we have the top of the box and the bottom of the box. We go, we go from, we go from uh, one to two is a whole step, two to three is a whole step, and then three to four is a half step. And when you're at the top of the box, there's only one note in between. So four to five is a whole step to that one note in between. Five to six is a whole step. And then six to seven uh, is going to be that half step. So those are where the half steps are located between three to four. So one to two to three to four, between three to four, five, six to seven, three to four, six to seven. Now the half step between three to four is normal compared to the major mode. The half step from six to seven is not normal because the half step is usually in the major mode between uh, the seven and eight or back to one because that's usually the leading tone that brings us back home. Meaning the mixolydian is the only one that doesn't have that leading tone, which kind of brings us back home, which is something that you can kind of add in a similar way as we do with the minor keys to try to give us a pull back home. If you're playing uh, within the mixolydian, you kind of play with that. All right, let's just go to then the mo to the to the to the different intervals. So if we go from one to two, that's going to be a two note away uh, major second because it's a it's a major mode, and that makes sense. Most modes have a two note away major second, even the minor modes, unless you're crazy Phrygian. And so it's pinky to pointer. I can count it by saying this is five four, three, two, the inverse therefore would be 12 minus two or 10. That would be a 10 note away, uh, a 10 note away minor seven. So if I play from top to bottom and I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a two note away major second from bottom to top, 10 note away minor seven. How do I know that's a 10 note away minor seven? Because if I went to this A and counted up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We get back here. So it's basically a circle. I can go one way around the circle or the other way around the circle. I also know that the second of, uh, by the way, I should play that over here too. Let's start doing that. If I was in open position over here, it would be the G to the open A, which I'd probably not play with my pinky, but rather my uh, ring finger maybe. So top to bottom that's going to be a uh, minor second bottom to top 10 note away uh, 10 note away I'm sorry top to bottom two note away major second bottom to top 10 note away minor seven okay and then I know that the second of mode number five mixolydian remember that I'm using absolute mode numbers and if I do that I think that's useful because if I say that the C is my key, Ionian, that is, is mode number one, then the fifth of mode number one uh, is Mixolydian. We also know that the one, four, five are major keys, therefore it's a major mode. And it's actually, if I look at the steps and I start on one as Ionian, it's two, three, four, five. It's four steps away. 
So whatever mode I'm on, I just go to that mode and the formula is the mode five minus one, because it's four steps away, plus whatever the relative position is, in this case two, gives us the mode number of four, five, six. So this would be mode number six, which is equivalent to the position related to the major scale. And I know that the two, three, six of the major scale are what I make minor chords from. So at the least I can say, hey, look, I know that I'm gonna make a minor chord if I was to play that A in Mixolydian. Beyond that, I know that the sixth is the Aeolian mode, which will help me to determine all the other relative positions that would still be in the same key to, uh, to, this, to this note. Uh, also, uh, the Aeolian, where does it live? Well, in the, in, the <clears throat> in the house analogy, it's not in the house because the only minor that lives in the house is the Phrygian that lives in the basement. So it's in the, it's in the double stop over here, and then it's in the meat of the hamburger uh, or the flat down here. And in terms of the, of the pentatonic barbell hamburger analogy, it's at the bottom left of the barbell it's gonna be one of the heavy weights on the minor side of the barbell, the weights on the bottom left side. Okay, let's go to the next one then, shall we? We shall, we shall go to the next one. I don't even, I don't even see why you have to ask. Of course, we're, what else would we do? All right, this one's hard to reach with, <laughs> with my, my acoustic here. So we're gonna say this is gonna be, the third is gonna be for the major, uh, uh, mixolydian mode must be a four note away major third because the third is the thing that defines it as a major mode so it has to be a four note away major third therefore and how do I know it's four notes away because I can count down this would be five and then four inverse 12 minus four would be eight note away which would be a minor nine and therefore if I play this from top to bottom that's a four note away uh, major third from bottom to top, eight note away, minor ninth. I can play that over here too. So here's my G here, and there's uh, right right here. So now this is gonna be top to bottom. That'd be a four note away, major third, bottom to top, eight note away, uh, minor ninth. Okay, and did I get that right? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little, I don't wanna say the wrong thing. I'm getting a little worried that I'm gonna mess people up but I think I'm doing it right. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. All right, any case. <clears throat> so, uh, we also know that the third of mode number five, Mixolydian, is five minus one is four, plus three is seven. So that's mode number seven, which you can also think of as the seventh of the relative major, and the seventh of a major key is that crazy Locrian one, where you'd have that diminished fifth and the minor third. And so, so if I was to say, what do I play when I get to this one? Well, that's gonna be the, the weird one. There you have that flat fifth that you would play in it that you can decide to play, or maybe you just play the minor third and leave out the flat fifth, whatever you wanna do, but that's the thing. Beyond that, I know, of course, it's the Locrian uh, mode, which will help me out with the intervals that will be in there, which again is distinctively that flat fifth, but it still has the minor third. And where does it live? In the house analogy, the seven note house analogy, it's in the attic of the box house over here. Uh, it's also the one that would be eliminated if we wanted to drop from a seven note house analogy down to a five note pentatonic. We would remove the top left Locrian and the bottom right uh, Lydian. In terms of the barbell hamburger analogy, it's gonna be on the inside of the barbell because uh, the Locrian is going to be the first one that we drop. So we would not play it if we're playing the five note pentatonic and would have to add it right before the C over here in the handle of the barbell if we wanted to switch from a five note pentatonic to a seven note mate uh, or seven note whatever mode we're playing in. I'm thinking about the pentatonic, by the way, as it's related to the, the, the Ionian and, you know, the major and minor scale. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now we're on the Ionian, otherwise known as the major or the fourth. So the fourth is going to be here to, so right there, is that right? Yeah. So there's the fourth. So we're going to say, 
and it's, it's going to be a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because the distance between the two notes is just five notes away, and that's a perfect fourth. Inverse, 12 minus five, which would be a seven note away perfect fifth. The perfects being inverts of each other. So when I see it topped on top of each other like that, unless it's in the fault line area, five note away perfect fourth. Inverse, seven note away perfect fifth. If I played it over here, open position, be right there's my G right underneath it, top to bottom. Five note away, perfect fourth, bottom to top, seven note away, perfect fifth. Okay, the fourth of mode number five, mixolydian is five minus one, which is four plus four is eight. There's only seven modes. Eight minus seven is one, getting us to mode number one, Ionian, otherwise known as the major uh, scale. And <clears throat> therefore, it's the one of the major scale, which I know would be a major chord. So if I see the fourth of mode five mixolydian, I would play a major chord on it. Not only that, but it's the one. So it has all the intervals of a major in relation to that C if I wanted to play some kind of more complex uh, chord than a three note pentatonic. I can build it based on the, the Ionian mode and all the intervals related to it. All right, so then we're gonna go then to the next one. And we're gonna say that we have down to the D. So that's hard to play up here. So we're gonna say that's gonna be uh, the fifth of mode number five. Mixolydian is a seven note away perfect fifth as most modes are, that's the norm. And this is, uh, an important interval because this is actually the easiest way to kind of see a major or a minor chord. So the one, three, five, or if it was, that's for a major or the one, three, five. So that fifth will be there, whether it be a major or minor when you see it that way. So it's kind of an important uh, shape, although a little bit more wonky to see. And uh, how do I know it's a seven note away? Because I could count it. That would be five, 10, nine, eight, seven. And the inverse, 12 minus seven, which would be five, five note away, perfect fourth. So if I play it from top to bottom, we have a seven note away, perfect fifth, bottom to top, five note away, perfect fourth. If I play that over here, I'm playing this one and then the open D. And that would be a, a seven note away, perfect fifth, bottom to top five note away, uh, perfect fourth. And the fifth of mode number five, mixolydian is five minus one is four plus five is nine, only seven modes, nine minus seven is two. That gives us the Dorian uh, mode. We can also say it's the second of the relative of a major scale. We know that the two, three, and six of major scales are ones that we would build a minor chord on Therefore, if I build a chord on the fifth of the mixolydian, it would be a minor chord. We can see that from the mode because it's got a small Roman numeral here. Beyond that, we know it's the Dorian, which means it would have all the minor intervals, but it has, what's the Dorian has uh, that distinctive uh, six on it. It has a major six on it, which is distinctive, I'm pretty sure. If I'm wrong on that, then go ahead and destroy me in in the comments. But um, that's what. I, so so then we're gonna say no one destroys me. People are very nice. I don't even get any comments anymore. And I don't even. So no one's not even whatever. And some 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 comments would be even if they were even if whatever. Here we go. So let's go to this. <laughs> What was I doing here? So where does the Dorian live? Well, it's not in the house because it's the minor mode and the only minor mode that lives in the seven note house is the Phrygian. So it's, it's hanging over here in the double stop, uh, in the double stop part of the double stop house with the minor. And in terms of the hamburger analogy, the hamburger barbell, it's actually encompassing, which is easier to see over here. It encompasses the hamburger top left, top of the left of the bun bottom right of the bottom bun all right and then so let's go and then let's go to the next one let's just go to the next one you've done enough you've done enough there all right i'll go to the next one it's gonna be i can't reach it 
it's hard to it's hard to reach up here because of the guitar. It's not really not that hard to reach if <laughs> if it wasn't in this part of the guitar, you know. So it, or you know, so don't get so anyway. So that's going to be a uh, six, which is going to be a nine note away major six for the mixolydian, which is the norm for the mixolydian. How do I know it's nine notes? Five, ten, nine, and inverse twelve minus nine is three so top to bottom when i see that shape i'm like oh that's a nine note away major six bottom to top three note away uh minor third the inverse of a major is typically a uh minor i can play that over here as well so if i play this g and then i'm going to then the e looks like that so we're going to say top to bottom that's going to be a nine note away major six bottom to top Three note away minor third all right and we know that the sixth of mode number five mixolydian is five minus one is four plus six which is ten minus only seven modes is three so we're talking about the third of the related major which we know that the two three and six are minor chords constructions relative to the major so if i was playing the sixth of the mixolydian which in this case is an e I would be playing an E minor. Beyond that, though, I know it's actually mode number three, Phrygian, which means that it also has that distinctive uh, minor second. So if I know that, I can not only play a minor chord, but I can play with that minor second in the chord or kind of tinker around with it as I go to that chord, as I'm noodling around within it, which is something that I wouldn't know if I just know that I'm going to play a three note a uh, triad that would be major or minor, right? So that would be that would be cool. That'd be something that you'd know that other people, you know, that would give you a little bit more pizzazz, pizzazz maybe, I don't know. So then, uh, by the way, the Phrygian is also in the seven note house analogy. It's in the basement. It's in the bottom left of the basement area. And in terms of the hamburger and barbell analogy, it's going to be at the top right bun of the hamburger hanging with the Dorian on the left bun of the hamburger. Okay, let's go back uh, to, it's also on the left side of the barbell. Oh man, I should have just stopped. Just stop while you're ahead. Let's go to the next one. Now we're on uh, the, the seventh of mode number five, Mixolydian. That's where the craziness happens. That's where we deviate from the major. That's when we say, I've had enough with your rules major scale. I've, I've been with you this whole way, but now I've had enough. And it breaks off and it goes to the, to the uh, 10 note away minor seven. So now we're gonna say that if I'm out here, uh, how do I know that's 10 notes away? Cause I can just say it's gonna be five, 10. Inverse 12 minus 10 is two. That would be a two note away uh, major second. So if I see that shape top to bottom, <laughs> That's a 10 note away minor seven. Bottom to top would be a two note away major second. We can also see uh, that out here. So boom, top to bottom. That's gonna be a 10 note away uh, minor seven. Bottom to top, two note away a major second. Hopefully I said major and minor correctly last time. We also know that the Lydian, uh, if, so I also know that the seventh of mode number five is five minus one is four plus seven. That would be seven, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 minus seven modes would be four, I believe, right? Hopefully. And that's going to be, the, we, and we know that the fourth of the relative major key would be because the one, four, five are the major chords. It would be a major chord construction. Therefore, I know that the seventh of mode five mixolydian which in this case is note number nine an f would be a major chord construction beyond that though i also know that it's the lydian which has that distinctive fourth i know it's the fourth that's distinctive with the lydian because it actually ties out to the fourth here and the fourth is actually a flat is is actually an augmented fourth which is kind of like a flat fifth so that has that distinctive you can see it right here with that b that's quite distinctive because that's going to give you a lot of tension uh if you're playing that like within a song and you're like oh i get i went to that lydian mode 
instead of just throwing in a major scale, you can throw in like that tensiony augmented fourth, which you can also call a flat fifth, which again is in the key, but it's going to give it a, a lot more tension. And that takes me back basically uh, home here. So we'll go back the other way. But before we do, let's do a joke here. Let's do a joke. All right, I'm just practicing. This is my practice jokes. Rough draft here. So here we go. Have you heard that the that that little people are not allowed to play acting roles as dwarfs in Hollywood anymore? Man, man it's it's not enough to it's 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 got to be tough to have such high hopes with such short arms. They've got high hopes but they've got short it's it's like it's like that time when I was trying to reach up to the top cupboard over the refrigerator. You know, I was like someone get me a stool. I, I need I need height to get hope. I need some height to get hope and vice versa. I got to get up to that cupboard because I need some height to get hope and vice versa. But obviously it's, it's, it's not that the little people can't reach their high hopes with small arms. Uh, you know, the part of the dwarfs is specifically designed so that the little person arms can reach it. It's almost like the, it's almost like it was designed specifically for reachability of the, you know what I mean? It's like the, the Hollywood executives are more like a cruel dog owner. Take it, take it a bone that's clearly designed for the dog. You're like, the, the bone is designed exactly for the dog, holding it just out of reach of the dog while telling the, the, the treat crazed drooling dog, I'm, I'm hovering it just out of your reach for your own good. I'm doing it for your own good, you know? And then they use like, they use that, that like super patronizing voice as they torture the, as they torture the dog, you know? Even, even, even the dog can see through the sham, knowing clearly he's being tortured for no good reason. There's no good reason for the, other than the entertainment of some power crazed executive or something. You're, you're, you're supposed to be entertaining the fans with good movies, not entertaining your, your own power tripping, dwarf torturing f urges or whatever. You know, you can, look, look, you can only torture the dwarfs if it's part of the script. You can only torture them if it's part of the script, executives. If, uh, and it has to be a script that someone else wrote, not your own script, because it's been, it's been well established that nobody wants to watch scripts that you actually write. You have to buy the script from somebody that actually knows how to write, that people have actually, they actually like the story and then you make the story into a movie without changing it, without changing the script. And then if there's some kind of dwarf torturing, that only within the context of the movie are you, are you allowed to do that? And still, you know, there's, it has to be like, there's rules and stuff. Anyway, that's my rant. Uh, let's get back to it here. All right, as we continue, let's bounce over here just to switch things up a bit before I go back the other way. Uh, let's go over to this one where I was trying to look at the different modes, but instead of looking at the different modes that are complementary, uh, I get these, like the related modes, I think these are the complementary modes. I get that term messed up sometimes. But in other words, we're going we're gonna to build the same modes in the same position so that we can see this helps us to kind of see the interval differences from mode to mode and is practical because if you're trying to change a mode in a song, it's common to change from one mode to another related mode as we've been looking at, like going from C major to A minor modes. But it's also common to be going around the root point to I think complementary modes is what we call them, meaning we're gonna have the same, in this case, A as the root point and then play and then switch to a different mode within it. So let's take a look at this. Let's just go through them here, for example. Like if I was looking at the major mode, I would call this position number two from a caged perspective. You might call it like a an E shape right here. And if I played my mode just just from from here to here, 
what's going to happen. I'm going to have my intervals. I'm going to let's try to do the intervals this way. Just I'm going to go. This is going to have a a uh, major second, and then it's going to have from here to here. It's going to have a uh, major third. It's going to have a perfect fourth. It's going to have a perfect fifth. Wait, I messed up. I'm, I've switched from my A. <laughs> let's, uh, let's try that again. It's going to have a major second. It's going to have uh, a major third. It's going to have a perfect fourth. It's going to have a perfect fifth. It's going to have a major six. It's going to have a, a major 11. And then it's going to have the octave. Right? So if I played that out, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I compare that to the to the second, which is the Dorian, which is a minor mode, I probably should be comparing the majors and then go into the minors. But let's just go to the second, which is the Dorian, so I could see that. It's going to have, this is a minor mode, distinctive by the fact that it has a minor third in it. And if I look at the intervals, we're going to we're going to say it still has a major second. Most modes do. It has a, a minor third, distinctive minor third versus the major third. It has a perfect fourth. It has a perfect fifth. And then it has a major six, which is weird for the minor. It has a minor seven. And then it has the octave. So if I play that out, th this, by the way, uh, for the Dorian, I could call this the Dorian shape now, same position, but now a Dorian shape, meaning it's playing from A, Dorian shape, though, because if I played it from the A to A, that would be mode number two, Dorian, and it uh, could also be called the D shape, because if I look at the relative Ionian major mode, then, then I'm sorry, the relative Ionian G up here, it would be, uh, the G would be right here, which would be a D shape that I could play that with. Uh, okay, and then if I count this out, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's interesting. All right, let's compare that to the Phrygian, mode number three. So now I'm in the Phrygian shape, which I could call it the Phrygian shape. Uh, it has, it's going to start at the top of the shape and has that distinctive second. I would also call it, say, shape number four. Uh, that you can call it uh, shape number four, which could also be called a C shape. You could see that because the related Ionian or major is an F here. So if I played, you know, the C shape within it, it would be uh, right there. Is that right? Yeah. And so that would be, you can call that an F shape. And let's look at the mode. So the, the Phrygian has the distinctive minor second, which is which is strange even for a minor mode. Even the minors usually have a major second. So we're gonna say this is gonna be a minor second. It has a minor third, because it's a minor mode. It has a perfect fourth, has a perfect fifth, has a minor six now, which makes sense for a minor mode. And then it's got the, uh, the seventh, a minor seven, which would be, and then the octave. So if I play that through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Versus the Lydian. Now we're back to the majors. This would be the fourth of the major scale, right? One, four, five are the majors. Notice I'm still using the same shape, which I would call shape number four, but it's been shifted back a string now. So now I'm looking at this A, but I'm shifted the shape behind it because we call shape number four could be either the Phrygian shape or the Lydian shape, which I would call, it would be the, the note two of the Lydian shape, right? I'd call it a Lydian shape that starts on note number two, basically is one way uh, that we might name it, but it's still like a C shape. If you use the caged system, you could see that because the related Ionian or major scale is an E and here's my C shape that would be used to make that to make that E uh, Right there and then if I looked at my intervals here, we'd say the Lydian has a distinctive it says uh, Diminished fifth, but it's actually an augmented fourth because we need a fourth here And so you can call it either one but because we need a fourth it should be called a fourth and I should fix my worksheet But I'm not gonna because the formula gets too complicated so we're gonna go, it's got a, a major second, 
Uh, it's got a major third. It's got a uh, a flat fourth, which is the funny one. It's got a uh, perfect fifth. It's got a major six. It's got a major seven. And then the octave. I think I got that right. So it goes one, two, three, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's probably the one I play least. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, interesting. Let's bring it on down to the mixolydian. Mixolydian, that's going to be like our bluesy type of mode. So now uh, we are in what I would call shape number five uh, on the mixolydian. And you might also call it a, uh, a D shape because if I looked at, I'm sorry, an A shaped because if I look at the related Ionian, it would be a D. So there's my D, it would be an A shape. There's my A shape bar shape like that. So if you're using the cage system, you might call it uh, the age shaped. Uh, you might just call it a mixolydian shape because we start, if we start from the top, it would be playing uh, mixolydian. So the mixolydian has that distinctive uh, minor seven, even though it's a major mode. So everything's going to be the same as the major until we get to uh, that seven. So it has a, it has a major second. We've got the minor third. We've got the uh, the perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and then uh, the minor six. But then, wait, not the minor six, the major six, major six, and then the minor seven, and then octave. All right, so if I play that out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 All right, interesting. Muy interessante, like an elefante. Elefante, the first, like the first. Sp I had a, I had a toy elephant. That's like my first Spanish word or one of them. It's the only one I knew for like twenty years, maybe, or I don't know, maybe not that long, but <laughs> the elefante. Uh, anyways. Well, that's an easy word. It sounds the same. I know. That's the point. Okay. It's interessante like an elefante. Let's go to the minor. We're going to go to the minor here. And so that's going to be what I would call position number one. You might call it uh, the minor position. Uh, this is like the main position a lot of people learn. First off, uh, uh, you, you also could call it a G shape because the re relative major now is going to be a C. And if I built a chord from that C, it would look like this. Or you can imagine the G shape like that. So, from a, for, so you call, call it a G shape. And then my intervals are going to be the minor intervals now. So you got the major second still, which is funny because it's a minor mode. It still has a major second, but everything else is like you would expect. You got the minor third, of course. And then you've got the uh, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor six, and then the minor seven, and then the octave. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there we have that. I won't do the Locrian. I should probably start doing the Locrian, but that's that. So then I could start to switch between these two and start. I'm just doing these two because they're next to each other. Or, so I could go like from the major to the Dorian just because they're next to each other. I'm like, all right, the major is on this A and it's like duh, 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 duh. And then like the Dorian is like it goes like this though. It's like uh -uh. So if I was playing a song, I can be like I can do a sly switch and so and then like sneakily as I go from that power chord that doesn't have a third in it so they don't really know yet but then I'll but then I'm like I add that third in I'm like oh what happened que paso
And then I'm like, but then I'm like, now I'm like, go back to that power chord that doesn't have the third. And, but then I add like the, the major third all of a sudden. And I could do it out here, reaching out to this one, even though it's outside my shape, but it's easier to reach than that one. So if I want to make it sound all of a sudden distinctly more major, I'm like, all major third, que paso. So I don't know. Anyway, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to this one and go back the other way. Let's finish this up. All right, so we're going to go back. We're on uh, mode five Mixolydian going back to the seven. So I'm measuring from this one this time. So if I go backwards, the seventh is going to be a 10 note away minor seven. How do I know that? Because if I measure this way, it would be five, four, three, two. That would be a two note away a uh, major second inverse would be 10 minus two, which would be a, uh, a uh, no, it'd be 12 minus two, which would be a 10 note away minor seven. So if I see that shape, of course, I'm usually thinking from the F, two note away major second. But if I go from the bottom to the top, that would be the 10 note away minor seven. Let's go back the other way. And now we're gonna go down, down to the six. So that's going to be the sixth, and the sixth of mode number five, Mixolydian, is a nine note away major six. How do I know? Because if I count from the E, it would be five, four, three, three note away minor third, inverse 12 minus three, nine note away major six. So if I see that shape, I'm usually thinking from the E top to bottom, that's going to be a three note away major third. I know that shape, but if I go to the inverse, therefore, nine note away uh, major six. No, it's usually a three note away minor third inverse nine note away major six. Hopefully I didn't mess anyone up there. But if I did, practice session, apologies. You're learning it wrong. Now you're gonna mess everyone up. It's lear you learned it the wrong way and now you have to unlearn it. That's like the worst thing you could do to people. Okay, calm down. We're gonna go, let's do this one. Back to the fifth. It's gonna be, the fifth is gonna be a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? because the distance between D to G is five notes. That'd be a five note away perfect fourth inverse, therefore 12 minus five, seven note away perfect fifth. So if I measure this from top to bottom, that's gonna be a, a five note away perfect fourth, therefore bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth. All right, let's bring it down to the fourth. Let's bring it down to the fourth. Bring it on down. Bring it on down. That's the one that's kind of hard to reach up here. Ugh, because it's not too bad. Stop whining. My finger, the acoustic needs a cutout. I need a cutout for crying out, whatever. Get over it. I need a new, I want a new guitar. No, I like my guitar, but I could use, anyway, I'm gonna go down to the fourth. This is gonna be the, wait a sec. Am I on the fourth or is this like, yeah, the fourth was over here. So that's gonna be, the fourth is gonna be a five note away, perfect fourth. How do I know? Because if I go up this way, it'd be five, 10, nine, eight, seven, seven note away, perfect fifth, 12 minus seven, five note away, perfect fourth. So if I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the seven note away, perfect fifth, but the inverse therefore, five note away, perfect fourth. Mui B to the N. Hippies are just being, man. Hippies are just being, which is fine, but why be why just be in when you can mooey be in? Why be why just be in when you can mooey be in? I'm going back to the to the prior one. This is going to be the third, which is going to be a uh, four note away major third. How do I know that? Because if I count this way, it would be five, ten, nine, eight, seven. That, wait a sec, it'd be five, 10, nine, eight. That would be an eight note away, which would be a minor six, 12 minus eight is a four note away major third. So if I see that shape, top to bottom, eight note away minor six, therefore bottom to top, uh, four note away major third. 
That's what I'm talking about. Talking about, talking about, talking about us. Talking about, talking about, talking about, talking about us. We're gonna go to the to now the second. The second is gonna be a two note away major second. How do I know? Because if I count up, it'd be five ten. That'd be a ten note away minor seven. Inverse twelve minus ten is a two note away major second. So if I see that shape, usually top to bottom, ten note away minor seven. But the inverse, therefore, two note away major second, and that brings us back to the octave, like an octopus. We have wrapped our tentacles around all of the chords back to the octave let's go ahead and hide these and so now these are all of the different combinations of a three note combination starting with the one which we're now going to imagine is the one of the mixolydian and see if we can play some different and just pick some of these as our chord i was going to try to do a metronome with this and i i should practice with the metronome i'm, I'm going to try to work that into my into my thing because i'm uh uh i think that would be i think i could squeeze that into my practice session but i'm not good enough at it yet so so i'm gonna do it maybe later but let's just pick one of these like if i was going to say i want to play a one two three and then i'm going to end it with a one again to try to make it sound like i'm in the mode i'm in so let's just do a one, two, three. What would that mean? Well, if I'm in Mixolydian, then the one would be the G, right? And then if I'm playing a two, well, I know if I'm on a G, that I'm, it doesn't always be a G, I'm playing mix, G Mixolydian, right? So if the one is the G, the two is G A, because there's only, so that's an A. But then the question is, is a major or a minor? And how can I know that? Well, if I don't know that the two is a minor chord that I would make, I'd have, I could do my math and say, well, I'm on mode number five, minus one is four, plus two would be five, uh, four, five, six, would be six. I know the sixth of the relative major would be a minor chord because the two, three, six are minor chords. Beyond that, I know it's the sixth mode, which is the main minor scale mode. So all the intervals related to the minor would would work the minor scale so i go from then here g and then i'm going to the to the a okay and then the third what is the third the third let's copy and paste so i have i can see them i could see them at a glance and the third i will make a different no do i need to make it a different color do you really need almost like rasta style rastafari uh okay that was unintentional so now we're gonna say so then that would be the third oh that's the crazy one though we'll play with it anyways so the third is going to be, uh, uh, do, do I play, I can see what the third will be because I'm like, all right, well, it's G, A, B. It's going to be a B. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be not a sharp or flat because it's in the relative C mode. So therefore, I don't have to worry about the sharps or flats on this one. And is it a major or minor chord? Well, if I do my math, it's five minus one is four plus three it gives me five minus one is four plus three is seven. And the seventh of the relative major, oh no, that's the crazy Locrian with the diminished chord. What am I going to do with that? Well, uh, we could throw it in there and see what happens with it. and then, Or we can try to remove the fifth maybe, or just play the one note rather than, uh, rather than the whole chord. So let's mess with it a bit so I can be like, all right, this is the... Now notice also the one that I'm playing with the Mixolydian. I know the Mixolydian has that distinctive minor seven. So that G, I can play normal with three notes, or I can add that seven, maybe right there. Which usually sounds like it's going to lead somewhere else, right? So it kind of doesn't sound as much as home that way. <laughs> but you can also relieve the tension in the same chord, right? G, tension G with a seven to relief G without the seven. But in any case, we go from the G to A minor to the B, which might look something like this.
sounds tension-y. Now that tension usually doesn't resolve. The problem is tension's great, but that tension usually resolves, you know, to something that's a half step away from it, usually like the C. And so I've got this tension that's not really aimed at the G is the problem. Right? So I can kind of force it maybe. I can be like, okay, let me see if I can make that work. Like G. Seven. Uh, this is another way to play the G. I could try to do is say well what if I don't throw in that fifth and I just play like a like a B which means maybe I just I just hold this B that note down and I'm gonna mute the G so it sounds I at least have the 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 B and then the third of it which is a minor third so I just remove the tension part of it which is the flat and see what that does I don't know let's try, let's try that G the one Minor. The B with the B is just the power chord B instead of Anyway, let's try a different one that doesn't have the third in it. Let's just move it down one. Okay, so get rid of that. That makes it hard. What are you doing? Why are you torturing yourself? You don't need to. You're torturing yourself like a like a Hollywood movie executive tortures the little people with parts. And they're like, you can't play it for your own good. You have to do it. You have to, it's like, whatever. I don't need to, I don't need, I don't need you, Locrian. I don't need you. I can do, I can move on. I make my own movie. All right. I have all the dwarfs in it. I have all my dwarf friends playing it with us. And we can find, we'll write a better script than you can write anyways. All right. So we're going to say this is going to be a one. to the four which is going to be equivalent to the ionian which is the major which means it's going to be a major chord
let's try without a two. Let's go like to this one. A one, the threes, the crazy Locrian, so we don't want, we'll skip that one. One, four, two, let's try that. One, four. So now we're going to, well, does it matter that it's inverted? Is that going to mess me up? One, four, two. Let's try that. Our, this is the same thing we played over here, except it's inverted. Okay, I see what's happening. I see what's happening. So these are the same ones. I'm just going to switch, just going to switch them out. Switcheroo. One. interesting let's try a different one the one let's try a one five which is a D let's throw a five in there and then I've been playing with the two a lot that's fine some a minor so we'll say so now we'll just say a one a one five uh a one five two so now we can say all right one d minor
try another one. Otra vez. Por favor. Por favor. I don't know who for vor, for vor is. This is going to be... Let's try this one. Just for the heck of it. Just for the heck. Alright. This is going to be a one... Six. Uh, a one five six. Let's just do it this way. One five six. So that's going to be a G D E. So G D minor. And then the six is a new one. It's the if I would is it a major or minor? Well, it's the third, which means it's. It's a third is the minor. Also, it's the Phrygian, which has that distinctive second. If I want to throw that into the mix, it might give me a little bit more tension before we go back home. So let's try that. Stop it there.